behind some streamer patterns. Um, one's going to be a sculpin. The other one is a uh, little rainbow. So I'll probably tie. It's not so little, but the uh, little rainbow second, and uh, we'll start off tonight with the little streamer pattern, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey Dennis, how's it going? Welcome and hello. Uh, nice warm day here in the North State. Finally, some sun. Which is interesting. Outdoors. Oh, left the volume on. That's going to cause trouble. Um, looks like I'm going to be refreshing again tonight, guys. I don't know why half the comments. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Come through super easy, and the others are so naughty. But it is what it is. So... Let me try to get this guy centered here um, so yeah I mean obviously trout opener if you're a Californians right around the corner and um, if you're not a Californian maybe you've uh, well I'd be at the fly stop next week yes I don't think they're gonna let me off the hook for that one I think I will be there actually yes I'll be there um, so we'll be having some fun at the fly shop event next week I'm going to grab my braid really quick. It looks like it fell off the backside. Forgive me a second. Eternity. It's just uh, some braided line. I'll show you guys what we're going to do with that. <clears throat> Nate, hello. Aaron, ahoy. Yeah, I think we all need to get out and fish, my man. Uh, evening to all. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the first guy out of the gate tonight is, uh, let's plug him in here, um, uh, just a little sculpin pattern, dig sculpins, I like swinging these, hey Jake, how's it going man, um, I enjoy swinging these on little trout spays, like a little four way trout spay, uh, quite a bit, so, Um, it's it's really it's not a revolutionary pattern. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the computer. If I seem uh, extra ADD tonight, um, it happens. Um, it's not a revolutionary pattern. It's just a fun little streamer pattern. Uh, bass will eat this in in rivers. Uh, trout will eat it, and and overall, it's just a really really fun little fly that you can fish. Um, it's got this cool new barred marabou up top. Big shad runs. I like it. Dennis will be helping with the food. I like it. Does that mean I get an extra portion? I am kind of a bigger guy. It's just a real question I have to ask, Dennis. <clears throat> so, for this little sculpin pattern, I'm going to be using a uh, a new hook. Let's see if I can get it closer to you guys. And this is an Ahrex HR430. This happens to be a number eight. So they tout this as a tube fly hook. And with all honesty, it is a great tube fly hook. Um, I just happen to like its shape and stoutness for other applications as well. So it's kind of a good crossover hook. And I'm just going to lay down a thread base here. Aaron loves the sculpin. Rob, hello to you, sir. Welcome. <clears throat> Glad you can make it. Let's see if, uh, how my, I preset all this stuff up and then I have a blind that blocks the UV light on my tying side of things <clears throat> and it didn't I took it up and it died <laughs> so I have old windows in this office and it kills my tips when I leave the window open 
That's my bad. Never learned my lesson. Uh, but that's okay. The good news is, is I have some more Loon products. So for this Sculpin, I want this tail to have a lot of movement. So I'm going to use a micro pulsator strip in a black olive. Um, they have so many colorways of this and the olive tones. They have like barred and you can get really creative with this. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> Happy April 20th. Hey, Scott. Good evening. And thank you, Dennis. I'm always excited to get extra food. So what I'll do is I'll trim this guy and I just go ahead and trim. Um, if you have a sharp pair of scissors you can see what I do there is I hold all the fur back and I just trim it and it actually taper cuts it this way and then this way at the same time. And uh, typically works out pretty well. So I'll just lick my finger just a little bit and that'll help me massage that hair back. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in the front here and I'll just whip finish this guy. Whoa, are comments like I actually have? Oh my goodness, comment freak out. Um, got lost there. Hold on. So I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. I just do a hand whip here. Typically. Maybe not today. Hmm. Okay. Um, and next up, this is uh, this is uh, some like Bassmaster Classic. Oh my goodness. Hey. Comments. Calm down. Let's see. There we go. David, hello. Let's see. I don't know why my comments are wiggling out. So all I'll do here is to secure this is I loop over the top and I'll take both strands and, oops, or one at a time, if I have to be patient, and I'll just pull those through. And that's going to give us just our good articulation. Go Rangers! <laughs> okay, whatever the Rangers do. Sorry, I'm not a, not a foosball fan or basketball, hockey, baseball. I would lose at like 90% of those like trivia shows. So, I'm going to go ahead and take some flow and just allow that to soak into the hide a little bit. And just the wee light tonight. It's just a uh, power lamp. Greta says, sup dude. Hi Greta. John, good evening and welcome. So, once I feel like that is secure, so that UV resin actually binds into this, kind of holds it all together, and uh, kind of just works out really well for me. Oops. <laughs> so next up on this guy, I am going to be using a, it's a Greg Senyo's and I'll put it up closer so you guys can see. It's a 23 millimeter, and they're a very small micro shank. Um, not a lot of meat to this guy. It's not going to add a lot of weight to your fly. Um, I feel like this fly is going to be heavy enough to do what it needs to do. Um, kind of have a lot of fish skull stuff on... Uh, on this episode, which is okay, and uh, if you guys saw, we're doing a giveaway together in a fly tying contest, which is actually pretty exciting to me. I always enjoy a good old-fashioned tie flying contest, and apparently if you use their new material, the faux bucktail, in your best whoop, 
caught the edge of that bugger. Uh, in your best presentation, then uh, you can win uh, a brand new Thomas and Thomas rod, a bunch of stuff from Loon. Hairline just threw down a $500 second place. Uh, the Loon is uh, has some sort of epic swag package as well mixed in there. It seems like a good thing to uh, try and enter. I am not entering it. But that's because I am an employee of sorts. Probably would not be cool. So if you guys are curious about it, check out the Flyman page or their Instagram for their fly tying contest and uh, it should be pretty slick. John, I'm hoping you're the last guy that's commented because that's the last comment that keeps coming up. Either that or comments just went completely away. So I'm hoping that's not the case. But I'm going to lash down this uh, Dacron backing stuff and it's basically bass fishing wizardry and uh, oops I'm going to go ahead and tie in this rabbit strip now the next thing I do is I just take a few turns so this is probably overall four to five inch strip and this is just going to cover up my junction and give me a nice clean transition gives me a little bit of a belly to work with as well I'm stepping on hooks There's giant flies so that's not bueno kind of primp it out, see how it's looking. Aha. Uh -huh. Jeff, hello? No, I'm not that good of a tire, Jake. It is it's the camera that makes me appear to have some sort of idea of what I'm doing. This is all really just kind of uh you're believing that I'm telling you good information here because they've decided to put me on some sort of live program stream thing but <laughs> but yeah you guys should enter the contest I mean heck a Thomas and Thomas fly rod I think is like a thousand bucks plus all the other cool swag that everybody's entered and uh, it's kind of cool never actually fished a TNT rod but they look nice um, so we're gonna use a strung guinea feather and olive it's kind of a cool new muted color. I've actually been using it a lot on uh, some big soft hackles for steelhead. Speaking of soft hackles, I'm actually, for the next six months, only going to fish soft hackles and uh, down and across traditional wet fly style fishing and just see how that works for me. Um, should be an interesting adventure to say the least. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely palmer this guy in. Smoke and mirrors, exactly. All smoke and mirrors. Nate, this is, uh, I couldn't tell you, I don't think it's Power Pro. Um, it could, I mean, you could use Power Pro, but this is, uh, this is uh, far more antiquated than Power Pro even. I'll show you in a second. This is just straight western filament. They say it's braided Dacron flyline backing, but it's green. I got it at like a bass store. I think the guy spooled it off of something much larger and it was like 15, 10 to 15 years ago. So um, I've never lost a steelhead on it, so it's probably still good, but we're just going with it. But Power Pro, it looks kind of like a Power Pro, so that would probably work just as well. I'm 
Okay. Now. So this guy is actually going to make an appearance twice tonight. And this is my Grizzly Soft Hackle Marabou Patch. I'm really hoping that this thing doesn't freak out because I just destroyed my memory card. Um, so let's refresh and see what you guys said. And kind of the cool thing about this patch is this is the kind of stuff that uh, Blaine's using for his uh, feather game changers. And uh, I kind of dig some of these little fluffy marabou patches. I think they that this is... Uh, what they use for like mini marabou and you can see it's got barring it looks kind of cool moves quite a bit so I'm just gonna get two guys that look like their best buddies like these two right here and these are just gonna be our fins I'm sure you guys have seen me where I use the uh, India hen saddle as a fin kind of well I guess we're just gonna take that back out um, where I coat them with UV flow and turn the feathers to like rubber but um, for this guy I'm just doing a nice light fin and if you look I'm tying it in night I'm gonna try to tie it in as flat as possible I want its profile to be kinda sideways so when it pushes that stems rigidity kinda brings it out in those the uh, little barbules on there, you know, uh, tantalize Mr. Trout or, well, depends on your river, could be a smolly too. Um, so you can see I kind of get this and then if I need to I can pull it inwards, equal it out. And then we'll go ahead and do our securing wraps. So you're going to get kind of this big, wide, Sculpin-esque profile. So if you swing this onto the inside edge or um, of like an eddy line, then you'll be able to get a little extra action out of it there. Put that guy back over there. So, <laughs> swinging wets only an experiment, a lost bet, or just testing yourself. Well, I figure Aaron at 37 years old, um, I probably have a lot of uh, years of fishing, knock on wood, ahead of me. So, um, I've set very odd parameters for this endeavor. Um, I cannot use an indicator and I actually have to use a fiberglass rod and a click paw reel and I can put a bead on the soft tackle if I need to or want to. So I've got about 70 tied up right now. Um, some of them now if a jig, if you fish a jig with a bead, but it's a soft tackle, technically, per my own personal rules, it's still going to be a soft tackle. So I'm just going to leave out rubber legs, uh, stuff like that. It has, a, it has to have a circumferential hackle on every fly that I fish. Um, so Bobby, to answer your question, um, I'm going to fish them deep, and I'll probably fish like tandem rigs and stuff like that, but mostly I'll be fishing like uh, my 4108 glass echo um, or my 906 big water glass echo with a click paw um, so yeah if I see fish rising on dries I don't get to fish dries I just get to fish subsurface on the wet swing so yeah I guess it's just a little uh, little adventure for myself as uh, just a way to do things outside of uh, my norm So this is that micro mar blah, blah, blah. 
uh, microbarred marabou, and um, this is in an olive color, and that's just going to kind of create the top of this pattern. And you don't have to leave like a ton of headspace here, um, but I'm actually just building this up so I can mount that fish skull head on there really properly. Yeah, so so my interesting thing is that I've been working out of my own head is if I palmer um, certain materials, say like Rhea, and I make it look like an East Coast style bait fish pattern, you know, there's already uh, justifications in my own mind that I'm trying to make. Like, if I want to go striper fishing, can I just make a big soft tackle look like a streamer? and use more traditional materials or is that cheating so there's kind of a bunch of weird stuff that I'm, I'm playing with in my own head um, normally I'd hit this with some Loctite I'm just gonna you can watch this just drink the flow the Sculpin drinks flow imagine that um, and then I'll just cure this guy from the front Last year I played a lot, and one of my main guide flies was just a simple brown biotid soft tackle, orange biotid soft tackle, and uh, it was kind of amazing to me to watch how many fish actually just came to the soft tackle versus everything else. Hey, Ebers. <laughs> Instantly, Aaron with the jab. Just pretty much a throat shot. <laughs> So these are just the supplied eyes with a little kit. Um, I do like to, typically I'll glue them in. If I can get it to adhere right there. Um, typically glue them on with the, uh, the Loctite nowadays. I'm just going to flow them into place and hope for the best. I think if you lose your eyes off this pattern, that's probably not the end of the world. <laughs> Don't mind my fingers there. I actually have Matt Ebers tying me all of my soft tackles, so it's super awesome. <laughs> So yeah, that's just my, it's just got a cool little profile behind it, and you can see it's just a simple little fun sculpin pattern. Um, if I wasn't flim flaming throughout the whole thing and blabbing about soft tackle fishing and such, then uh, the time might probably go a little bit faster, but uh, it's not a really, really... Uh, prolonged tie. The the cool thing I like about that hook is it's really it's a pretty narrow gapped hook so I feel I mean I feel really good it's no worse than fishing like a size six or four uh, rubber legs so um, it seems it seems like you won't give anybody any brain piercings or anything like that um, so that's a positive note as well but uh, lots of barring and lots of movement here so we'll have to put that in the tank that's right the tank um so the next guy that i'm doing is is this guy which is just a fun triple articulated um it's kind of a hybridized i borrowed some of uh the theories right through here on the feather game changer i didn't put like the uh the bodybuilder in there but uh, 
It's just a nice light streamer pattern with uh, a lot of movement and not a lot of bulk. So you should be able to throw this, I would think, on like a 6 to 7 weight. Fairly easy. And again, uh, for our trailer hook, or because it does have double hooks, because um, for bass, bass get as many hooks as you can fit in their big old mouths. Um, this is that HR430 tube style hook again. This just happens to be a number two. So, um, and you guys can see it right there. It's just got a cool curve to it. But it would be pretty sweet on like some other patterns as well. But uh, this might become one of my favorite tube hooks for uh, steel heading. I didn't have them for steelhead year this year, but you can see that's a rather stout little uh, uh, beastie. Thanks, Ebers. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nate. You should tie some, Aaron, and then send them to me. So I won't fish them. <laughs> Well, I'll fish them in the fall, six months from now. So this guy's a little bit more of a complex pattern, I'd say. I mean, obviously. Um, for the tail, we're going to be using, again, our Grizzly Soft Tackle. And again, I'm using these fluffy, dandery, marabou-styled feathers. I want it to be really suggestive back there. I want it to kind of flow and almost like when you see a fish sit, their tail moves in like very odd ways, much different than what my hand was doing. But uh, hopefully you get the point. And uh, so I want that marabou to kind of just rest there and, and, and do cool things. Then I'm also going to be using just a, uh, a natural grizzly and, uh, for this tail segment here. I think they sell these like kind of a la carte as well. I think it's this like barred mini marabou. It's like straight chicken tramp stamp. I think that's, yeah, that'd be, yeah, chicken, tra we'll call it chicken tramp stamp. Um, so, pretty cool little material, and again, just tons of cool undulation and movement out of it. I don't know why I just put the uh, the white guys, they're the natural white black grizzly on the inside, but I do. And I don't mind if this gets a little bulky, I mean it's not going to hurt anything. So, I just kind of create a little tail there. I'm going to go ahead and kind of just dispatch all of the, uh, the follicle sections. That's right. The fishtail hands. <laughs> I like that. The dexterity in the fins on fish is so amazing to watch how they can, like, you know, they have like those little cartilaginous little tchotchkes in every single one of their fins, and they can control it like, 
you know, like an airplane rudder. So this is again, this is a very heavy section on soft hack hackle marabou patch. This is, uh, we're going to stay away from the chicken cham uh, tramp stamp over here, and we're just going to start going into these more meaty guys right here, which also randomly make great soft tackles. Um, and I just try to get three guys that are pretty close to the same size. And for this, close does count. It doesn't have to be rocket science. So this is like a great lesson in palmering chicken feathers because we're just going to palmer this one all the way through. And when I get into this marabou fluffy stuff, I don't stop. Um, kind of just keep rolling with it right into the next feather. You could probably uh, achieve the same effect with like a schlappen, or schlappen, schlappen, schlappen. Um, I just really happen to, you know, you might get a little bit more length out of that. I just happen to like this uh, particular feather's characteristics. Because there's like a really smart guy named Blaine who's already tested his prowess. So I'll take my word, his word for it. So depending on the size of the feather, sometimes, you know, that you get. And I'll just wrap back over just a little bit. It doesn't have to be pretty in here. This is not a super pretty section. White balance is way off on that. That, ch <laughs> that white chicken feather is quite eliminated. Yeah, no problem. No problem, Joe. I'm glad you made it. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to use for my, my pink stripe on here is a Ripple Ice Fiber in pink. And it's my, remember, binder rings are your best friend. We're going to start over because Joe just got here. So I'm going to pull out about, this is about five to six strands, not too many. There's a lot, this is a real, real bright pink, and uh, which is okay. I mean, I want this to have some flashy behind it. Um, And there's my predator wrath. So this is this is quite the mouthful. This is Senyo's metallic barred predator wrap in gold, olive, and black. Um, so it's it's quite a, quite a bit to say, but uh, it's a great color. Um, if you're trout in your area, like if they stock fish and they're a little bit lighter, um, the gold fluorescent chartreuse in black also is a good option. Sometimes um, out here the bass just seem to love devouring stock trout. So they tend to be a little darker so I run with the the true olive here. And I'll just trim off an inch or so of this and uh, that should suit us for the whole fly. Oops. So for the first section here, I'm going to take just about a quarter inch of the predator wrap, and all I'll do is we're going to half it, but I'll just alternate so I have a little bit of a taper here. 
this kind of alleviates using this material alleviates having to do a ton of spots on the back and so forth which is kind of nice then I'll just taper cut that just to kind of fill in quick little whip finish and just a uh, touch a just a little kiss of flow here <coughs> and I don't do any barring on this section <laughs> um, I don't I don't do any sidebars on this on the front sections you can you know choose to do side barring if you would like um, the choice is really up to you you know, to get kind of some of those spots. Hmm. Let's see here. Had my fish spines, I buried them or dropped them. There they are. They're underneath our front hook. Um, so this is a 35 millimeter uh, fish skull articulated shank. Works really well. There was a time when you had to bend these yourself. That was a dark time. You no longer have to do that. So that's positive. A good trick is I use a real slick thread. So I'll just drop some flow on there and hit it really quick. And that'll actually just solidify that area so I don't get any slip from the, uh, the shank. I'm just throwing down a basic thread base. Let's see. Bingo. And from here, we're just going to go straight into our uh, white marabou patch of feathers. And you're going to have some ground to cover here. So it gets kind of repetitive, I apologize, but it's just part of the pattern. And again, I'm going to leave the fluffiness in there. I just don't mind it. I do not mind the fluffiness. I think it, it moves well, and it, it has a place on the fly. You can trim it off if it bothers you. Oop. And if I could stop catching the shank right on the edge with my very <coughs> light thread, that would be brilliant. But you got to watch the edge of the shank sometimes. Especially with GSP, it seems. I don't know why GSP. Whoop. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Tragedy. This thing just like grenaded. I apologize. I will not catch the edge of that shank this time. There we go. Should be able to work with that. this very far in front of the edge of that. Bingo. Hmm. See, that's why I'm not entering the fly tying contest. Shenanigans. So we got a few more of these guys here. <laughs> oh, my little magnet trick. Yeah, I 3D printed that a while ago and it only works on uh, steel vices. So since not all vices are steel, um, it's not as genius as you would think. 
but uh, it works well if you have a magnetic parts on your vise. It's really easy to move it and manipulate and um, yeah I was quite proud of it. Took me like nine times longer in 3D CAD than somebody who's really good at it would probably take, but uh, the 3D printing side of things is pretty darn cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> That's what happens when you're uh, multitasking, running a camera, and hitting refresh buttons and shenanigans. You get good at saving your flies. Because you tend to have slightly more mess ups than normal, I would say. So there is a lot of palmering for this pattern, obviously. Kind of comes with the territory of using a feather. You could probably alleviate some tines maybe with some schlapping, but I really like really like this this feather's characteristics. A little bit different. Um, so we're going to take about a half inch of the senyos this time. And you can put the sides or the top in first, it doesn't matter. I start to create just a little bit more. You can see how I'm rocking and rotating that material. And that's just to bring a little bit more down the sides. And we're going to step it up to about 10 strands per, you know, per side of ripple ice. And again, I'm just simply halving it on there. Alright, so now for the really exciting portion. Pick up my magnet and move him. So next up, this is kind of a it's kind of a cool new predator hook. Uh, they call it a trout predator. This happens to be a one aught. Um, so this is a pretty big hook, um, as you can see. Uh, but it's a TP six ten. Says predator trout flies so I figured that it was to tie trout flies on for predatory bass that's my logic behind it I felt like it would have been the, uh, the perfect hook may not be uh, what they meant it for but uh, it's a big round bend ring eyed hook with a I mean it's pretty darn heavy <coughs> I'd put it up against uh, any of the other ones that you know guys have been tying meaty flies on for a while now I've uh, definitely done some bend tests on it and uh, the strength at which it uh, does not bend out was impressive
So I'm just going to secure this in. Bend this side back. A little hard to, to revolutionize in the back of the, the hook shank. I haven't got very good at that. I don't think that there's a there's a bass out there <clears throat> that's going to pull this apart, but it's better safe than sorry. Um, so we're going to use some articulation beads. I'll dig down in here. Um, I don't think the color is super overly important here, but uh, they have to be pink just is the correct option. Any other color than pink and the fly will totally not work. Um, so don't try blue. Fish hate blue. So what I do here is I'll just string these guys on. They'll come up through. And then I'm going to punch that really nice and tight. <laughs> kind of just take some loose entry wraps. And then be, oops, really naughty. And then break the thread on that as I'm trying to cover it up. Imagine that. That was like karma for my naughtiness. <clears throat> so I'll sneak back here and I'm going to zoom out just a hair. So that's what I use the magnet for most of the time, is triple articulated stuff where I need to get it out of my way. I go for kind of an odd feather here. This one happens to be really uh, fluffy, and I'm just going to use that to kind of cover up this junction point. The, uh, like the, it's kind of a half marabou, half standard feather. Thought I caught you. <coughs> so I'll just use these longer feathers to kind of cover up that junction point. If you wanted to go with a smaller fly, you might not need two beads here to, you know hide your junction zone as much um, or as big of a feather I should say to hide this double bead junction zone so you can shrink this guy down uh, and miniaturize this fly quite a bit and still get a lot of the same activity um, and just a little bit of a little bit smaller so I'm just gonna for good measure throw some strands of uh, some ice ripple in here only. I'm not going to do the full gamut. And we're just going to go back into palmering our feathers. Sorry if my voice is starting to cut out. I think I've been talking for like a month straight right now. We've been doing a, uh, like Dennis was talking about, like all these uh, barbecues and events across the West Coast and um, I'll actually be, if anybody's in San Francisco this weekend and they're bored, the Golden Gate Casting Club is hosting Spayorama, and I will be there hanging out with two-handed rods and some single-hand spay rods, or one-hand spays as we like to call them, and some stuff, and lots of cool things. Um, but I think the last year, the guy who won it, I think he banged out a spay cast like almost 200 feet 
So it's quite the sight to behold. Um, pretty cool event. So if you're in that zone, it could be pretty fun to go check out what these people are all about. And I think a lot of shops will be there. It'll be a pretty cool adventure. You could also probably get away with uh, maybe some of that, that filler chenille here, make it like a little bit different style um, body as well, you know. It won't have the same like kind of that flowy motion to it as, as the soft tackle will, maybe be a little bit more rigid, also be a little bit lighter, so it's kind of a, a cool interesting opportunity to try something a little bit different. So at this point before I put my last feather in I'm going to throw in uh, <clears throat> I'm going to throw in the fins and you can see I'm just using some smaller fins um, and that's off that olive marabou patch here. So Try to find two that are, you know, symmetrical and look good. Save the rest for a, another soft tackle down the road if you want. So you just get the idea. There's just a little bit of, a little bit of play there with the, uh, <clears throat> with those feathers. And we'll just do one more, the final, oops, palmering of said chicken feather. These like triple articulated are, uh, you know, they take a little bit more time. They'll creep up on you. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I mean, that's the kind of the goal, Scott. I want to. I want to get some, some nice spotties, some smallmouth, largemouth, um, large predatory browns. Um, on the McLeod, earlier on in the year, there's a lot of browns that kind of cruise in, uh, that live in the lake part of the year. They come up to spawn, so I wouldn't be scared of throwing some big meaty stuff like this at those uh, those grumpy guys as they're coming through. Lake run fish are, are pretty cool. They they tend to be quite ornery. I, I kind of treat them like you guys treat like uh, on the you know the Great Lakes region uh, with your steelhead. They're they're migratory. I mean some of our lakes, lakes out here are pretty big. I mean, I'm not saying that they're great lake size by any means, but, um, you know, we don't have tugboats and Coast Guard or anything like that, but uh, nonetheless, they're, they're pretty, pretty big lakes. So those fish get to go out there and eat all sorts of different stuff and hang out and get angry. So I'll take a little bit over a half inch of the senos for this last bit here and um, I'm going to do this in two parts. just want to make sure my coverage is, is pretty good.
I'm going to use uh, just the number seven, lucky number seven, fish skull mask, I think. It's either a six or a seven that I like on this. I kind of know when I get it on there. I'll look at that six really quick. Nah, it's going to be a seven. Um, so my big trick here is, instead of getting glue and stuff, is I'll circumferentially apply some flow. And it makes a nice little pocket there. And then I just smush the fish mask on there. And I cure it. And by the time it's done curing, I like to think that it's like thermally fused partially to the uh, the whole scenario there. Hmm. Let's see. Eyes got knocked down. Here's your uh, faux bucktail for your entry. Knocking everything off the desk as usual, which is good. Knocked the eyes that I wanted off the desk. And we'll just throw those ones in there. So these are the uh, ice eyes. These are a, a wee bit small. It's my Davy, and Fail, Davy McPhail impression. Oh, those are way small. What am I doing? All right, hold on. Drop the flies, the eyes back here. I will find them. I have this box, and I just throw all the materials when I'm done in there, so I don't. I can take them off the table. Huh? Okay. Maybe I lied. I'm not gonna find the eyes. Interesting. That's okay. We'll make do with these smaller eyes. So substitute in the correct size eyes. <laughs> ah, there they are. Bingo. So I'll just put these, these are a 7 mil eye, so it, I don't know if that actually is a, a perfect correlation between the flyman eyes and their heads, but if it is, good job on their part. Can't believe I... And last but not least, what I do is I take our flow, and I actually just coat the whole head scenario here. There's a lot of guys that will, they just kind of cheat it, and I need to loosen this up just a bit. Um, but you can see the base, and it rounds out. It actually is a great cheat, because it'll give you that full-blown, hey, I made this giant head, but it's actually just a, a great cheat. It's really durable. Fills in all around the eyes, and then uh, also goes back in behind here so I have no issues just filling that with resin and building a really bomb proof head so that ultimately is and you can see I mean that head's not <laughs> yeah, it kind of, I think the resin gets hot, and I just think it, I just like to think that it, like, binds somehow. Like it's, like it's super cool and binds in there.
It is always the last place I look. I had a uh, had some people in the uh, the office here recently, and they were like, "Dude, how do you operate?" And I'm like, uh, "I just go for it, man." I'm gonna try to uh, swing you guys over here. Zoom you out a bit. Nope, that's in. Sorry. I'm really sorry if you're bad at roller coasters. But you've put me in charge of yourself. Mm. <coughs> Let's see if we can get the uh, big rainbow streamer to swim in there. So you get some pretty... See if I can't get it to... Let's see if we can enhance. So it's got a great, great profile and look. Tons of activity. Seems like they dig it. Let's see if we can get it to swim down here in the uh, nether regions of the tank. Keel's pretty darn okay and I have the tank cranked up to to full bore so you guys can see there it does wiggle a little bit but not really the retrieve for this flies it's not steady motion um, I think it's better served up here where it's able to twitch and dance and move I need like a stick so all in all kind of a cool cool pattern Tie a little sculpin monster on there. And yeah, there's bubbles in the tank again, I know. You guys are just staring at an empty tank. The reflection of my hands tying knots, sorry. Should have been more prepared on this one. We'll put the sculpin down in here. Down in the bottom there, Mr. Sculpin. So you can see he's got just a ton of cool movement. Keels really well with that hook going down. We'll scrape all the bubbles out of there hopefully one of these days here. I'm trying to shove them down. But it's a really, I mean, it gets down and a uh, real castable fly as well. So that's kind of cool. I like that molt, uh, micro pulsator strip and uh, Frank the Tank. <laughs> so we'll zoom out here. Oh, that was all the way the wrong way. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah! So about that, that was the wrong side. I apologize. Um, but Frank the Tank. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so next week, actually, it's going to be super strange. Um, so like I said, I'm going to be at Spayorama this week, if you guys are out, if anybody's in that, the Bay Area. Um, all weekend at the Golden Gate Casting Club in the Golden Gate Park. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> next Friday, I am at the fly shop here in Reading. Now, it's going to be a midday event on a Friday, and I realize that there's responsible people in the world, and they have jobs. But, uh, it sounds like we're going to have Mike Mercer, um, and, uh, another gentleman, his friend of mine, great tire, uh, super good Stillwater fisherman, um, Zach Thurman. Pretty sure he's good at fishing and everything, but he seems to really enjoy uh, stillwater fishing. So he does a lot of chronomids and stuff like that, um, damsels. Um, so he's going to do an hour long or however long stream he wants to do on Loom Live. Um, so should be cool. Two events on Friday. I'll be at the fly shop. Dennis, extra food. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and 
it should be good. Uh, it should be a fun event, and then uh, we'll resume our normal stuff. As always, if there's something you guys want to see, hit me up, matt at loonoutdoors.com. Always happy to help you out and tie something that you guys want to see. Um, and I'm not only going to be tying soft tackles, don't worry. Um, so, without further ado, we'll see you guys on the next one, and I appreciate you tuning in. Alright guys, have a great evening, take care. Right.